Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome to a new episode of Wonja. I'm by myself again. We will do the two one-on-one -on -one, uh, episode only once a month from now on. And uh, without waiting further, let's jump in this one. So in the wake of last week's event and new information that has been coming to you, most of you have realized that our system needs some sweeping and drastic reform, starting with the police. In fact, those of you who have never been pulled over by the police, stop, search, come to realization that law enforcement agencies do not really operate in real life as they do on television. The operational mode of using violence and force to resolve every or almost every police case does not lead to anything positive or good in reality. On TV, there is a lot make-believe from Hollywood telling you that they are always right and always good. No matter what they do, even if one of them makes a bad turn, there will be a good badass cop that will stop him and arrest him. Nice propaganda for the men in blue, but bad agenda for most of us in the society and the minorities in general. In my case, I've been stopped, questioned, and even searched somewhere in between 50 and 70 times from the age of 16. I'm alive and physically healthy, but at some point, those repetitive random stops on the road and on the street, searches, questioning based on racial profiling left an emotional and psychological trauma. For a long time, walking through airports and just seeing a police car passing by on the street next to me was not easy. I would experience a high level of restlessness, anxiety, despite the fact that I was not doing anything wrong. But rationalizing it all, I feel lucky as I know that many others have been suffering and still suffer humiliating and damaging encounters with the police. I think for you to understand better what is really going on with the police and uh, black people in the minority, it is better for me to give you some example about what happened with me and the police. Starting with this first story that goes back to 2012, I was living with my mom in the south of France. I was working as an artist and preparing for a show in an art gallery and my brother came visit us for a few days. As I was bringing him back to the train station, we passed a service road where four police cars were stopped and just uh, waiting for the end of the ship. Apparently it was five o'clock on the late uh, afternoon summer day and they were all outside the police car chatting and whatever they were doing. But we passed them and as we passed them, I see in the corner of my eye, I see some agitation and I tell my brother, they're going to come for us. He's like, no, they won't. Why will they? I say, they're going to come for us. Watch. A hundred meter down the road, you know, Looking in my rearview mirror, I see sirens, a flashing light, and cars coming fast at us. So I slow down, and one, 60 seconds later, we have one police car in front of us, one on our left, and one behind us, a full presidential escort. The police car on the left signals us to pull over and park, which I do immediately. Take the, the, take the key out of the ignition, put my hand on a steering wheel, and we just were there passionately cracking up jokes and just trying to make fun and uh, make the situation better. Uh, in the meantime, what was going on outside, we had police officers in bulletproof vests and semi-auto guns and uh, handcuffs and everything you can think of, all the arsenal to stop the bad guys, just walking on the street and just like making sure that traffic was passing by and, not, and that people were not stopping, just looking at us in case the situation would degenerate. That's the protocol. So in the end, a police officer comes to us and he's knock, he knocks on the window and uh, he's asking us all those questions. Who are you? Where are you from? Where are you going? So we tell them, we explain him that my brother has to make it also on time for his train. And he asks us a few more questions regarding your profession. So we just tell him. And once again, he goes over everything and everything again. While all the two guys are circling the car and making sure the situation is under control. And I keep just laughing, and in the end, I tell the guy, hey, "We're gonna miss the train. And if you don't, if he misses the train, you will have to pay for it. And because you're responsible that we have done anything, and we need to go now." In the end, disappointed and a bit irritated, he let us go. Two weeks later, about, I get in the same situation. This time with uh, motorcycles, I get uh, presidential escort once again. Lucky me, one police uh, motorcycle in front of me, one on my left, and one in the back. Police motorcycle on the left signals me to pull over and stop, which I'll do right away. Keys out of the ignition, hands on the steering wheel, waiting patiently. 
as you're going around inspecting the car. Then knocks on window, same question, where are you, where are you from, where are you going, say the same. And after a while, they just look like they're not satisfied. And, I'm, and they're like, uh, can we open a trunk? And I'm like, normally they're not supposed to do that. Well, actually at the time, I didn't really know what my rights were. And what my rights still are today is still unclear based on the country where you live in. But I tell them, sure, you may open the trunk. So I open the trunk, get out of the car, and they just look and to the surprise and their disappointment, there is nothing in the trunk. You could just read on their face, disappointment, sadness. We didn't stop the bad guy. They let me go in the end once again. And... Um, I've been stopped around 13 times within three months in the same area, which is the southwest of France, uh, in the Basque and Bayern country. This the area where all this uh, questioning and uh, pull over by the police happened. One last time, this was the last time actually, I got stopped by, uh, I was on my way f uh, for surfing and uh, I get stopped by the police and um, they asked me what are you going to do? I said, well, look on the right, I'm going to go surf. It's around 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning. And they asked me, do you know what the weather forecast is? I said, yeah, I sure do. What the weather forecast is and the weather forecast. Do you want me to tell you the, we the weather forecast for the next five days? I asked them. And the weather forecast. They're like, uh, surprise, no, that won't be necessary. I said, are you sure? Because I can. They say, no, 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 it's okay, it's okay. And then a bit irritated that time, I tell them, well, if there is a problem, we can go to the precinct or we can go and we can talk to your boss because it's becoming a bit um, ridiculous that I get stopped so often and nothing comes out of it. So whether you have something against me, I don't know of, and we should just like uh, get to the point right away or you have nothing and you should write down my name, license plate number and just have a talk with your supervisor and all the other police precincts in the area and custom as well. You should do that. And he looks at me very surprised and he just told me, okay, and just let me go. So those were in the south of France. I've also been stopped in uh, in California, in uh, in Texas, uh, many times more in California. And one time was a bit more scary. The police uh, came to me, was on the side of the highway, and he definitely had his uh, his hand uh, on uh, on his gun when he stopped me because uh, he was approaching the car and I had at that time I just moved to California I had a Texas license plate and he didn't know what it was but he also saw in the end flashing his light in the dark that I was black and that is when he put his hand on his gun so that time was a bit scary because what I was doing I was it's pretty much the situation was that my girlfriend from France at the time I had just dropped her at LAX Los Angeles International Airport and a flight was not going through. So she called me a bit panicked, not knowing what to do. And at the time, we didn't have any smartphone. It was still a time where you had those uh, flip phones or phones where you had to dial everything. It was color screen, but you had to dial all the stuff. But I couldn't write down the number while driving. So I decided to pull over because it was an emergency and I had to write down the number. And she needed my help at the moment. But I couldn't, uh, I couldn't write the number while driving on a highway, especially on Highway 5, super busy in California. You cannot do that. So I pulled over. So I explained the situation to the police officer, why I was stopped, why I was doing, uh, why I was there, and everything. But he couldn't, he couldn't uh, accept the situation, and he tried to find everything, a th thing that was wrong with me, and all that, asking me all the way to the license plate thing, how long I've been in California, and uh, how long I was a student there, and he realized that I've been in California for like five days extra that I should have changed my license plate, which I didn't know. So he found all the reason that he could give me a ticket uh, because he couldn't give me a ticket on the spot and realized and finally gave me a ticket for that. So that was really unfair. As my housemate told me when I got home, he told me that yeah, that's really unfair. It shouldn't happen and it's not okay. And I tried to plead my case when I went and I had to pay for the, the fine. But they say it was your fault. You should have known. That's the only thing they said. Which I was, you know... Uh, committing an infraction I didn't know about and uh, I paid for it fine but it could have uh, also told me uh, to do it and gave me a warning and I would have done it as well that's what it would have done in other cases with other people I believe but that that is what it is um then the, the times that I've been stopped the most obviously are where I'm um, I'm crossing borders at uh, airports or on land and uh you always get, I always get stopped most of the time, like 90% of the time. I get questioned even when I'm at 
the border cross and I always get the extra questions. Even when I'm traveling back with my girlfriend, it happened once and uh, everyone was passing, all people of light skin complexion. And who was the person to stop? Me. And I was in Holland. And to ask me question, where I was from, what I was doing, etc., etc. Also, the last time that I got stopped like this at the border was um, in Iceland a few months ago. I was uh, on my way there for a job, modeling job. And as I'm exiting the airport, the, the douane, uh, the people from the custom stopped me. And uh, the lady jumped out of the, the, the booth behind a mirror glass and said, you there, stop. So I stopped. I said, yeah, what is it? She said, where are you coming from? Uh, how long are you staying here? I'm like, yeah, I'm, from, I'm coming from Amsterdam and I'm here for work. And she and I'm like, oh, I see what this is about. And she's like, what, what? I said, well, look, there is no one of color here, but I'm the first one. You jump out of your booth and, and you stop me like this. She's, and she looked all like... Uh, guilty and all defensive uh, wh wh what do you mean what do you mean come in the back with me so she brings me in the back and what, what do you know there is another person with dark skin complexion uh, and i'm like yeah you see this is what i'm talking about and she's like what do you mean mind your own business and i'm like i'm minding my own business i'm just making uh, uh actually i'm just saying the fact there is another black person here and you just stop me and put me in the back so she keeps on going with me and she's like, why, why are you here? I said, well, I'm here for work. I just told you I'm here for two or three days just to work on a project as a model. And after that, I'll be on my way out. Yeah, do you have any proof of that? I said, yeah, sure. I have a proof. You want to see the email? So I show her the email, the text messages, and everything. And then she sees the name of the client. And she's like, oh, it's, it's for this client. I said, oh, so. And I realized that because I'm a model and I work with a big client and she knows a the client, then I'm okay. And then it's okay for me to be there despite being black. So I'm like, I'm like, really? And I'm, and then I'm like, you really stopped me because I'm black. You put me in the back and all that. And you realize that this is not okay what you're doing. And she's looking all confused, say, yeah, yeah, well, uh, have a good day and uh, please be on your way now. So I left it there. It is clear there are, in all cases I just gave you, I was not doing anything illegal. I was just minding my own business, exercising my constitutional rights of free movement in my own country, in a country where I was registered as a legal citizen, not breaking any law and not acting in a certain way that could have raised suspicion and caused my, my stop or interpolation or questioning. The only motive of the stop and questioning was the darkness of my skin complexion and of my face features. I was only guilty all the time of being black and nothing else. Now you cannot help but wonder how successful those stops and searches are really in contrast to how damaging they are to the community and to society. We see that incarceration does not make crime drop and that and when incarceration drops, the rate of criminal activity or arrest does not go up. So there is no relation between incarceration and, and criminality. And you cannot help to wonder which directives and what type of training are given to law enforcement. It seems to me that the focus is of the arrest is based on bringing numbers in order to uh, to match monthly targets, which will justify targeting populations that are in general more s struggling financially, socially, and where a minority of its members will engage themselves in criminal activities to mean to meet hands at the end of the day. The system knows that those people are pushed in a position against the wall where they won't have any other reserve than engaging in criminal activities to survive or finance a drug habit uh, because they need to cope with a traumatic and violent environment they are born in and in which they are growing in. And when you find a situation as myself when it was almost harassment all the time, 12 times in three months and even more, who do I call and who do I report that to? Who is going to be held accountable? It is far too often a one-way system where the police is rarely held accountable for its mistake and, and far too many times relaxed. The checks and balance system here is, is failing. The police seems to have some sort of super immunity that all, all citizens and most citizens don't even dream to have in a professional and personal life. So demo democracy is slow to see immediate change as always, but uh, 
it has to come from us, I think. I in order to see those changes happen faster, we have to change ourselves first and tune up our thoughts to, to, to the reality and realize that what we've been fed and accept that the, the, the way we've been programming conditioned by the media and Hollywood and in school to view and perceive the police in a certain way is not real and realistic. It's not really what is happening. And once that is done, we have that we have accepted that the police is not what it stands for, we can make sure that law enforcement officers get the proper training they need to in order to do the job well and in order to protect citizens and protect us from each other and protect them for themselves, actually. The system should find a way to hold the gatekeepers of the law accountable with a division that oversees complaints against the police and its malpractice also coming from other police officers. This is necessary as the police is a visual and direct barometer of the health and state of the justice system and furthermore of our society. If the parts of a society that are supposed to protect you from internal and external aggression turn against you, then it is doing nothing less but behaving like, in medical term, a immunodefensive disorder. So what is supposed to protect your body against aggression is actually not doing its job and even turning against you. Thank you guys for listening. And as always, comment, like, share the podcast, and I will see you on another episode. Thank you.